don't despair. That is achieving nothing whatever, and it's bad for the soul. So we have a, a duty to see what is hopeful and do, we're not asked, nobody is asked to do the impossible. We can only do the, the bit that we can. And that means doing things in our own life and with our own life and uh, furthering larger causes in the way that we are best in a position to do. But we all have a role. And I think one of the things I tried to emphasize was that although the materialist reductionist picture results in a vision of the cosmos as a heap of junk uh, with no meaning, beauty or purpose and that we have no role here, I would you know, I'd go to my death to defend the opposite point of view, that actually it is beautiful, it is rich, and it is our pleasure, our duty, and something we should be grateful for to help further that. Yeah. I like that you said I would go to my death. That's the sacrifice and service of the sacred. <laughs> it needs to be a sacrifice. Yeah. I would want people to hear that the love of wisdom and the love of being are real possibilities, that there are already people of good faith and good talent doing this uh, individually and collectively, and that that opens up a possibility for a kind of transformation so that as you fall in love with being again, instead of the reciprocal narrowing that we've been just been talking about and how we get addicted, because that's what addiction is, reciprocal narrowing, a reciprocal opening is equally possible. This is what Plato proposed with Anagage, and that that is still actual, and there are people and communities and practices that you can go to to actualize that, to realize that, and there is nothing stopping you from doing that right now. May I make a hemispheric comment? <laughs> sure. The left hemisphere closes down to a certainty. The right hemisphere opens up to a possibility. And so what you've really said is we need to further the processes of the right hemisphere, which are always expanding and exploring, rather than those that close down to the arid bit of something we think we know. Yeah, I don't want, I'm not proposing cognitive closure. I want continuity of contact. I know you. Yeah, yes. That's why I said it. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. 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 I think the religion, the concern about religions that many people have actually has to do with people orienting to certainty with them and yes. then yes. closed mindedness and holy wars and whatever, yeah. as opposed to the exact opposite, holding the mystery at the center, holding exactly. the unspeakable, the unknowable, but the real. And so there is an epistemic humility that is built in forever. Yes. We spoke about this yesterday <clears throat> and you said, don't despair. We actually, I, I liked in our conversation, you were saying, when we are actually open to the beauty of reality, there's a sense of awe and the gratitude and the humility that comes with that. Exactly. But when we're open to the beauty of reality being harmed, which is in the factory farm and on the war field and whatever, we're also um, feel the suffering of others mm -hmm. such that it's overwhelming. Yes. And the overwhelm and the suffering and the overwhelm and the beauty are related because if the reality wasn't beautiful, you wouldn't care. And both of them make you transcend your small self and both of them motivate the sacred obligation. Yeah. So there's something where the sacred obligation just comes from seeing clearly, letting yourself be moved by yeah. the beauty of reality yeah. and associated with that, the meaningfulness to protect it. Yeah. And the yeah. role of the new religion, philosophy, whatever, insofar as it can help people be more sensitive to both the beauty and sacredness and thus a protective impulse towards reality is what I am hoping people take away. Excellent.